Hello my friends, today we're going to talk about safety in the gym, safety in weight training. Disclaimer, I am in no way qualified to give training information, fitness information, medical information, dietary information. I am not qualified in any way. I am just giving you advice. It's good advice and listen to what I'm telling you but always seek medical experts, and dietary, qualified dietary people before you do any exercise program or any dietary changes. Always see the doctor first and get everything checked out. Make sure it's all okay. What I'm telling you is for your own good and hopefully it will keep some of you out of hospital. Today I'm talking about safety involved in weight training. Then, let's face it, picking up heavy weights is extremely dangerous. You can get seriously hurt picking up heavy things. We've all watched the videos on YouTube and the chap squatting and you know falling over and people getting stuck under bench presses and it's funny and we have a laugh. But it's not funny. Joint replacements, tendons ripped off the bone, getting crushed under the bench press. People have died bench pressing. It's not funny. So here's my tips on how to train, enjoy training, be happy and enjoy it and make progress but don't end up in hospital. Okay? This is going to be a long video and um, it's not very exciting, it's not a Star Wars film, it's just information. So save it, like it, share it with your friends because it uh, might be the most important video on weight training that you've ever seen, right? Let's get to it, this is going to take some time. Okay then, part one, equipment. Now if you're going to start weight training at home, or you are weight training at home, your equipment is essential. Now, I would suggest that you go for something like this, one of these type of machines. I have done a review on this machine if you want to see it, but there's many like it and they're all very similar. Now, with this kind of machine, uh, it's very very unlikely that you're going to get hurt. It, it's not impossible but it's almost impossible. You can work all your body on a machine like this in 99% safety. They're, they're good. Little kids can use them, anybody can use them. Your old granny could use one. If, you, if your idea is you just want to tone up, build a bit of muscle, a bit of strength, health, then you can't really go wrong with this type of a machine. It's as safe as safe can be. But if you want to go down the route of weights, free weights, which is what I prefer, you know, a barbell and dumbbells, then what you need I would highly suggest that you get a power rack. I would, I would say if you're going to train on your own, like I do, I would say it's almost necessary to have a power rack because it drastically reduces your chances of getting hurt. If you use it correctly, it's very safe. If you get stuck under a squat or a bench press or something, you're going to be in a lot of trouble, especially if you're on your own. 
So I'll get one of these. Now, there is other types that are like parts of a power rack, but I don't think they're that good. I think a full power rack like this is what you need. Now, some of them I have seen on very expensive ones that these clips fall off. But this type, they just don't come off. You have to turn it and pull it out. Now, there's no way that can come off. I have seen very expensive power racks where they've been bench pressing, they've hit that and knocked it off. So, look for that kind of a clip. They don't fall off. They can't fall off. So get your power rack, set it up correctly with the height of the bars, and you're okay. Bench. Get a good, solid bench. Never, never lift heavy weights on an unstable surface. This Bosu ball stuff and, and all this celebrity fitness, it's shit. If you're on an unstable surface and you're rocking and you're trying to pick up heavy weights and as you go along the weights get heavier and heavier and you're rocking more and more you are going to get hurt. You're going to slip then BOSU balls and things like that and these big, what they call them these big bouncy ball things that you sit on and do overhead pressing don't use them. If you've got one give it the kids to play with in the garden or stick a nail in it and throw it in the bin get a good solid bench rock solid when you're weight training a stable surface is essential don't weight train on unstable surfaces it's good to watch it's good to watch other people do it and it's funny and we have a laugh but that's what you need to do watch other people do it don't try it yourself okay that's equipment equipment covered the next thing to look at is form form exercise form now form the next thing to look at is exercise form now do the exercises in textbook perfect form I know your favorite bodybuilder and your favorite weightlifter he does this and he does that but you're not him what what I would suggest most of the personal trainers I have ever known or met know absolutely shit about how to lift weights correctly. They know nothing. What I would suggest you do is find out some power lifters, proper competitive power lifters. Go to a powerlifting gym and say, mate, I want to learn how to weight train. And if you've got to pay them, pay them. They'll probably be glad to help. But learn how to squat, learn how to deadlift, learn how to bench press. Correctly. Because if you start off doing it wrong, you'll always do it wrong. People in gyms, oh, they're just, they're an accident waiting to happen. They're doing everything wrong. Form. Good form. Good range of motion. Full range of motion. No partial reps. Experts, world champions, top class bodybuilders, they do use partial reps. Yes, but they, they know what they're doing. They know when to use them, when to apply it, when to not apply it. And they don't do it all the time. Full range of motion, good technique. Technique, get it right. Squatting, bench, deadlift. Get those three things correct overhead pressing you can teach yourself if you want to but don't do it by watching 
the entertainers of YouTube, you know, don't go to the Bradley Martins, these kind of people. He's entertaining, he's basically pissing around. Here, here are some people I suggest you watch if you want to learn technique, form, get it down. Technique and form is essential to prevent injuries. To stop sudden tears and rips, but also over the long term. It's like, imagine this, you don't clean your teeth, what's going to happen? Nothing. You don't clean your teeth tomorrow, what's going to happen? Nothing. You don't clean your teeth for three years, and then they start to hurt. And then you go to the dentist, and they've all gone rotten at the back, and two fell out at the front. Injuries caused by bad form build up over years. You might not be feeling anything, but two or three years down the line you find out your shoulders are knackered because you've been bench pressing wrong. So technique, get your technique down. Go and seek out some power lifters, not blokes who are trained in the gym like me, competition power lifters and say show me how to bench press. You know, give them some money or what, or do a bit of power lifting so you learn all the moves. So technique, technique is everything. Okay, we've established that. Use good form, always. Right, next bit, gym tidiness, keep your gym tidy, don't leave things on the floor, don't trip over dumbbells, bang your head, if you bang your head on this, it won't hurt this at all, okay, tidiness, keep everything neat, keep everything tidy, be proud of your gym, keep it clean, get your dustpan, clean the floor, clean the area, Make sure there's no weights in the area you're using. I have seen a man personally do flyers on a bench, go back, hit a dumbbell on the floor, and he chopped his finger off. Right, tidiness. Keep the gym tidy. Nothing on the floor that you can trip over. Be organised. Know where everything is. It's important. Be like the military. You know. It's no good getting to Iraq and saying, where's the bullets? Oh, I thought you'd got them. Well, and you got them. You know what I mean? Look after your equipment. Keep everything clean, tidy. Right? Important. Listen to your body. I mean, what's this, some new age hippie shit? Listen to your body, man. No, listen to your body. If you're doing... Uh, Say for instance, tricep push downs. And your elbows are aching, you're waking up in the night, your elbows are aching. Try using a different shape bar. Try altering your technique. Try not using so much weight. Your body's telling you something about this exercise is irritating you. So stop doing it and change to something else. That's important. Listen to your body, listen to how it's reacting to what you're doing. If you're knackered all the while, your joints are aching, you're training too much, recover more, eat more food, sleep more, have more rest. If you're tired all the time, you're going to get a bit of soreness, you're going to get soreness every now and again, but the soreness and there's, there's a pain inside my shoulder joint that keeps me awake at night, that's not normal. You're doing something wrong. Drop back the weights, drop back the workload, don't do so many sets, don't train so many times, 
try a different technique. I find shoulder machines hurt my shoulders like hell. So I use dumbbells and I do one at a time. It's because then I've got that bit of movement where I can find my own groove. I'm not being forced. Smith machines, don't ever use them. Crap. Anything that forces you into a movement. So listen to your body, see how it's reacting. If something's irritating you, switch to something else. If you're doing squats and it's killing your knees, have a look at your technique. Uh, do leg pressing instead. Oh, when I do leg pressing, my knees don't hurt. Well, do that then. Okay? One of the main causes of muscle tears and tendon tears is anabolic steroids. So, if you're going to go down the road of using anabolic steroids, be very careful what you're doing because what happens is when, when you take steroids, your strength rapidly increases, your muscles grow like crazy, but your tendons and joints take a longer time to catch up. So if you keep pushing it, pushing it, more drugs, more drugs, more weight, more weight, eventually, snap, the tendons rupture. This happens quite a lot. People who take a lot of steroids very often get bad muscle tears and pec tears and things. You'll find that most bodybuilders when they're on steroids take growth hormone as well because growth hormone helps in repair. That's what it does. It doesn't build muscle, it repairs the tissues, the tendons, injuries, that kind of stuff. It repairs the body. So if you're taking massive doses of steroids, you usually take growth hormone with it because the two work together. So if you're going to go down the road of steroids, be careful because you can grow too fast and get too strong too quick. So you've got to be very careful. And if you're not going to compete in anything, don't take steroids. Don't even think about it. Waste of time. Waste of money. And where you live may be illegal. So if you're going to take them, still progress slowly. Don't try to do too much too quick. But when you're on drugs, you can do too much too quick. And that will damage you. Okay? Wraps. Wrapping up the elbows, wrapping up the knees, wrapping up the wrists, wrapping up everything. Get one of these suits and wrap up the entire body. Right. The whole point of wraps is you can lift more weight. If you if you put knee wraps around, you can get on the um, leg press machine and do twice as much. You can squat 50 pounds more with knee wraps on. But over time, it's going to damage your knees. Unless you're in a competition where the objective is to lift as much weight as possible, that's how you win. Why do you want to lift more weight? If you can do 300 pound, comfortable, nice, but you put your knee wraps on, you can do 350. Well, take the knee wraps off and don't do 350. There's no point. You're compressing the joint together. The, the kneecap's going to rub. <sighs> wraps, I don't like them. I think if you're wrapping your wrists up, you're either using too much weight or you're bending your wrist back. So, if you've got injuries, it's, it's a tricky one, wraps. You know, because if, 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 you if you go to the doctors, you've hurt your arm, they put bandage on it, which is a wrap. But you rest it. So, don't use them. Drop the weights back. Do less. Let it rest. That's a better way. Unless you've, you've absolutely got to get that bench press. Well, just drop the weights back. Let your injuries heal. And if something's hurting you, maybe switch to another exercise. I'm not a fan of wraps. I'm not a fan of wrapping up knees, elbows, wrists. Don't like it. If you can avoid using them, don't even bother with them. You know, if you're deadlifting, 
and you can't grip the bar, then it's too bloody heavy, you take some weight off so you can grip the bar. Unless you're in a competition and you've got to lift as much as possible, don't use wraps. They can cause injuries, they can make things worse. It's like walking with a walking stick. Eventually, you can't walk without the stick. So, avoid them whenever possible. Don't use them. Not just to show off with your mate, look, oh, I can squat 300 pounds. Gee, oh, great. Take the knee wraps off, go all the way down, and you'll find you can only do 200. You're kidding yourself, and you're damaging yourself. Okay? That's my take on wraps. Don't use them. Monkey see, monkey do. Don't copy other people. Because your favourite bodybuilder does this, don't mean you've got to do it. Or your mate down the gym stronger than you. Okay, stronger than you. Great. Don't worry about it. You'll live with it. Don't try and copy what other people do. Don't read uh, a certain bodybuilder's program who's taking thousand pounds worth of drugs every month. He's eating 15 meals a day. He's doing this, that and the other. He's training five hours a day. You're not going to. Be sensible. Don't try and copy other people and what they do. You're not them. Okay? Important. Don't be a cookie cutter. Right then, bench pressing. Bench pressing is the exercise where you're most likely to get hurt because you end up with a weight on top of you. So I do not recommend that you bench press on your own. Always have somebody with you. I do bench press on my own, but I don't recommend that you do. So if you're going to have to, if you're going to bench press on your own, there's three basic ways to get out of a bench press that you get stuck under. One is have a power rack with the bars, catch the weight, and set it upright. Another one is to not put the collars on the bar and just tilt it one way and let all the weights fall off and then let it fly back the other way. That's the other way you can get out of a bench press. Another way is to roll it down your body and sit up. Either way is not very good and I did have to roll it down once and I had a big belt on and the belt cut into my stomach. So, and another way, when you, the other way of doing it is when you let the weights fly off the end, the thing kicks up, probably pull you off the bench and smash into the wall or something. So it's not good, but if it's that all get killed, you're going to have to do it. Now bench pressing is extremely dangerous. Uh, there was a chap killed a couple of weeks ago bench pressing. There's been world champion, top class power lifters killed bench pressing. There was one killed because he was using the suicide grip and it come out of his hands, dropped on his ribs, crushed his ribs, he had a heart attack, he died. You know, it's not to play around with. It doesn't take much pressure to crush your windpipe. I would say 40, 50 pound, that's it, you've gone. And, it, and if you're dropping it, so it's dropping that far, then it's in your windpipe, it's all over. So don't take the bench press lightly. Let me explain what the suicide grip is. The suicide grip lives up to its name. It's when you don't use your thumbs and you hold the bar like that. You can bench press more when you do this because somehow it like forces the angle back. So you bring your back into it more. So you can bench press more using that grip. But do you want to risk your life to bench press a tiny little bit more? Don't ever, ever, ever use the suicide grip. Always use your thumbs. Another thing, you 
you should never have your neck in front of the uprights on the bench because then if it drops it can roll onto your neck so right this is a demonstration of how the power rack works right the bench pressing Okay, where you go, that's a little bit high, but there you go, like that, okay, can't do it, you fail, nothing's going to happen, oh, right, there you go, you fail, Perfectly safe. Okay. Got another thing you can do is roll it down your stomach. Now imagine this pearl rack's not here. You take it off, off your bench, roll it down, you get stuck, you have to roll it down your body and sit up. I can't do because this is here. But if it wasn't here, I could roll it all the way down and sit up. Another way of getting out of a bench press is don't put the collars on. You go like that, you get stuck. You go like this and slide the weights off the one end. And then it will kick back and fly up that way. That will get you out of trouble, but it's a mess, dangerous. But it's better than being crushed. So always bring it down below the nipples. Keep it away from your neck. So it goes this way, not this way. Okay? Here's a famous video that's all over YouTube. Now this chap is using one of these partial power racks, these catcher type things. And somehow the weight got behind it and he got stuck. I don't like him. Use a full size power rack. This chap is lucky to be alive. Okay, then, here's the last few things I can think of uh, regards safety. Shoes. Don't wear training shoes for weight training. Don't wear running shoes, cushion shoes. Wear something like these, I think these is 8 quid, Primark, dead flat on the bottom, no cushioning, or if you like, no shoes at all, but you want your feet flat on the ground, you don't want cushioned shoes, right? For uh, deadlifting and squatting and that kind of thing. Um, Next, deadlifting. When you're deadlifting, always have your arms straight, dead straight, locked out. Don't have a slight bend in your arm because as you're deadlifting and it gets hard, you're going to try to curl it and then you're going to rip your bicep off the bone. So you're pulling it with your back and you're pushing it with your legs. You're not pulling it with your arms. Just think, just think of your arms as straight with hooks on the end when you're deadlifting. If you try to curl it, you're doing this, you know, you're going to put way too much pressure on the bicep. The bicep that's that, that way around is going to get ripped off the bone. So that's something to bear in mind when you're deadlifting. Right, do some stretching. Not stretching before you exercise, but do some stretching. Keep flexible. Do a P90X or some stretching video that you get off YouTube or something. Do some light stretching. Important to keep flexible. We've all seen pumping iron 500 times. And um, the opening scene when Arnold and Franco with the ballet dancer are doing all this. Keep flexible, don't get stiff, don't get what is. 
get, you know, supple, like a tiger. Keep your muscles loose. Regarding that, don't neglect the rear delt. Very, very important muscle. Very important for um, the health of the shoulder joint. Because everything's pushing, pushing, pushing. Your shoulders have a tendency to pull forward like that. And then you're going to start getting in trouble. Always, always exercise the rear delt to keep your shoulder in position. Face pulls, put an elastic round something like that. Do some of them. Tiny little muscle, small amount of weight, very important to keep the shoulder joint developed all the way around it, keep your shoulder in position. Right, that's it then. No distractions. When you go to the gym, you're all business. You're not there to text, to telephone. You talk to your mate, concentrate on what you're doing. Have fun like The Rock, Arnold, Teddy Cruz, C.T. Fletcher, these blokes, they enjoy training, they have a good time, they like a laugh and a joke, but when they're training, it's all serious. The blinkers come on, bang, boom, business. Concentrate on what you're doing. Don't, don't bicep curl thinking, shall I? wallpaper the spare bedroom and that's how you get out. Enjoy training, it's fantastic. Be safe, not sorry. That's a good one. Be safe, not sorry. You haven't got to listen to what I've just told you, but you might wish that you had. Okay? So but if you want to be like Arnold, Franco, Sylvester Stallone, 70 years old, still down the drip gym, enjoying it, on your bike, having a laugh, running about, healthy, happy, then be careful, concentrate on what you're doing. Okay, good luck to you all, and for Christ's sake I hope it gets a bit warmer. It's a long video, but show it to your mates, try to keep them out of the hospital, and um, if you've got any safety tips of your own or good ideas, put them in the comments.